Hello, my name is Terry Wyatt, and I'm very happy to show you some new updates to the brand new Lightroom Classic CC 7.3 update that was just released uh, today, April 3rd. So with that said, uh, one of the major new things in this version of Lightroom is how we now handle profiles. And I know profiles is kind of a loose term, depends on where you come from. They're monitor profiles or calibration profiles. There are all kinds of profiles for different things. But I'm speaking specifically about profiles for processing your raw files. So let's first of all start off with where they have moved from. They used to be on the calibration, used to find the profiles right under the process version or right above it, can't remember anymore, but that's where it used to be. And now that has all moved up to the basic panel. So in the basic panel, you would have normally started off with Adobe Standard, which is relatively flat. Any new images you bring into Lightroom will automatically switch to the new Adobe Color. Now, we won't switch your old ones. In other words, your old ones that were still on Adobe Standard will stay on Adobe Standard until you switch them because we don't want your image to change the way it looks. However, if I switch to Adobe Color, you'll see the color shift a uh, slight amount. But think of Adobe Color as just a better starting point. As a matter of fact, think of any of these Camera Raw profiles as a better starting point for editing your image. They're non-destructive and they can be adjusted or switched at any time. So Adobe Color would be the new starting point, but for a landscape image like this, I would probably prefer the brand new Adobe Landscape. So as you can see, there's Adobe Color, Adobe Landscape, Adobe Portrait for portraits, and Adobe Standard 2.0, as well as Adobe Vivid. But that's not all. Let's first of all start off with Adobe Landscape for this photo, and even that takes it up a notch. That makes it a little bluer for the ice and makes things just a little bit more saturated. And so again, this is my starting point. So from here, I might wanna go in and just set my dynamic range a bit by adjusting my black and white sliders. I would probably go in and bring the exposure down on this image just a tad bit, a little bit overexposed there for my taste. Next thing I'd do is I'd probably bring in a little bit of dehaze for the overall image, and I'd probably bring down the highlights of this photo, just so we can bring out the dramatic clouds that are there, and then maybe even adjust the shadows up a bit more now that we brought the highlights down. So just with a couple quick adjustments, I can get from an image that was, eh, it was okay, but it was out of the camera as a raw file to a much better looking image. Now, if I wanted to change my mind and say, you know what, I still prefer this to start off with Adobe Color, it doesn't affect my other sliders. In other words, this profile can be changed and worked with at any time. In addition to those profiles, you'll notice there's a little grid over here. If you click the grid, that will bring up not only the Adobe Raw profiles, the ones we were just talking about, but it will also bring up the new artistic profiles. So these artistic profiles, as you can see, as you hover over each one, will give you what that's going to look like if you were to switch to that profile. And this way you can have your image take on a whole different new artistic look. So there are some black and white profiles as well. And I know what you might be tempted to think of these as filters, but again, keep in mind that these are non-destructive um, they can be turned on, turned off at any time. They don't affect the rest of your edits. I mean, they'll affect the visual look, but they won't affect the actual sliders for the rest of your editing. And that way, that's why they're called profiles. So for example, let's say I like this particular artistic profile. There's also an amount slider. So I can say, no, not that much of that artistic profile. Bring it down a bit, or let's really crank it up. Let's really see how crazy we can get with that particular profile. So at any given time, you can come back and adjust this without affecting or without having to adjust the rest of your edit. Now, you'll also notice that there's a little star in the upper right corner. If you like this particular profile, you can go ahead and star it. As, and basically, that's marketed as a favorite. And that way, it will allow you to um, always be able to pull it from the list without having to scroll down and go find it every single time. Now, speaking of list, we can see our uh, profiles larger. So that way you can just get a more visual, larger look at them. You can also look at them in a smaller list. And that way you don't get the, you don't get the preview in the panel, but of course they will still preview when you hover over them. 
I think I'm gonna to stick to the grid for now. I might switch to large at a different point. But whenever you wanna close the profile browser, you can close it. And also note that this will open the door and has already opened the door for third party profiles to come in. So there will be third party profiles you can download. Some will be free, some will be purchased, of course, based on each third party. Now, speaking of these profiles, the original ones were called Adobe Camera Raw profiles for a, re for a reason because they work on your raw images. So for example, this is a PSD, this one's not raw. If I were to go ahead and switch to that one, I notice that it says color, not Adobe color. I notice that I don't get the other ones. I get the artistic one, but I don't get those Adobe Camera Raw profiles, landscape, portrait, so forth and so on, because this is not a raw file. So if you, you're like, well, hey, where are all those profiles that Terry was talking about? Note that it will not work on JPEGs, TIFFs, PSDs, or basically non-RAW files. All right, so with that said, let me go ahead and switch over to a portrait. And I've got a portrait here that was originally in Adobe Standard. I'm gonna switch it to what it would have defaulted to had I brought it in as Adobe Color. That made the background a little bit more dramatic and allowed me to see through to that. And of course, because this is a portrait, I would switch it to Adobe Portrait. And it's gonna make a subtle change. We don't want drastic changes but portraits should look better than standard or color on people. Now, if you have a peep, or if you have a people, if you have a person in a landscape, then you might want to try Adobe Vivid. That's gonna kind of give you the best of both worlds for your landscape and the people that are in it. It's making her a bit too warm for my taste, but of course, I can always go in and adjust the white balance on this photo or the temperature on this photo and kind of bring it out just a bit more. So the profiles are huge improvement, huge addition to Lightroom Classic CC, Lightroom CC, and of course, Adobe Camera Raw. Now, while we're here in Lightroom Classic CC, I'm excited about something else. I'm excited about something else that's here that I've been wanting to be here for a very long time, and that is, I, I said it earlier, but I didn't really talk about it. The dehaze slider has moved. It used to be in the effects panel, and it used to be that the, the kind of like the main and only the reason I went to the effects panel. Now it's up here where it belongs in presence with the rest of the editing features that you'll use the most. So again, we'll switch this one to Adobe Landscape. Uh, again, if I wanted to add a little dehaze to that, I can. I want to bring down those highlights to bring out the clouds a bit, I can. And again, I'm doing most of my editing right here getting my favorite sliders right here in the basic panel. So keep this in mind, the next time you're working on an image, no more trips to the effects panel just to get to dehaze. And no more trips down, all the way down to camera calibration to get to your profiles because they are right here. Now again, because I made that artistic four a favorite, that artistic four is there um, for me to click and choose at any given time or not. Now, last but not least, these profiles can be added to your presets. So if you were to save a preset uh, right now with what you've done to it, what you've done to this particular image, we'll go up to the preset plus sign here. I'll click create preset. And one of the things that will now be there is the ability to have your profile as part of the preset. So we have the ability to have the treatment and profile as part of this. So you would name the preset, save it, and that way the preset will come in or be used every time that you want um, that particular preset to be used. You can, of course, uncheck the other things that you don't want to happen. So with that said, that's it for this update. Uh, take advantage of those new camera raw profiles and the artistic profiles for all your other images or your raw files, and of course, the rearrangement of some things that are now in the basic panel where they belong. Cheers, everybody. Take care. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.